Cute girls and magic. Two things equally unlikely to be in my life. You know, if I acknowledge that this joke is bad, would that make it fun? So, I finished Heartcatch Precure, my very first Precure. Can I get some applause? Thank you, thank you. Watching anime as an anime YouTuber is really quite the challenge. Our struggle is deeply underappreciated. Alright, I'm not gonna waste much time explaining, oh, it's a kid's show, but it's still good. Since only people with the intellect of an ant judge the qualitative potential of a show purely on its premise or demographic. Heartcatch Precure is pretty straightforward. The shy and clumsy Subomi is granted a magical companion and powers to go with it in order to fight off Sabark and his desert apostles as they try to turn the earth to a desert, taking advantage of those with weak hearts. A monster of the week formula with a gradually growing ensemble of magical girls, each episode is usually tied to some sort of simple but sweet moral. The monsters they fight a physical embodiment of some sort of emotional struggle. The striking visuals are a big part of what makes the show so much fun, with character design and animation direction by the insanely skilled Yoshihiko Umikoshi, whom you might be aware of from his work on My Hero Academia, Mushishi, Ojimajo Doremi, and Kashurnsins. The characters in this show are given a lot of visual freedom, distorting in all sorts of fun and interesting ways, and often are intentionally posed to exaggerate the angles as much as physically, or I guess imaginatively, possible. Now, even though it's episodic, that's not to say things don't develop. The characters change quite a lot over the course of the show, and one thing that struck me most immediately right from the first episode is how it goes out of its way to establish key character flaws that must be overcome. Addressing how they grapple with their own personal issues and learn to improve themselves in a surprisingly nuanced and well-developed manner. It's not so simple as learning they have a problem, addressing it, and then they've completely overcome it. Nor a frustrating repeat of the same flaws with no learning as a crutch for conflict. But a believable sequence of progress and failure. Nor is it a matter of eliminating something wrong with them, it's more about coming to understand oneself. In order to progress and become more powerful later on in the show, the Precures must quite literally face, and ultimately embrace, the flaws that they are most insecure about. Tsubomi, who struggles with social interaction due to a lack of self-confidence, seems to have overcome the issue for the most part, but in that aforementioned episode, we find that she has been holding her inner feelings back more than anyone, which leads to that challenge being the most difficult to overcome. Or for another example of Heartcatch's endearing nuance, we have the character Itsuki. She's initially set up as studious and boyish. She's class president, skilled in martial arts, and subject to the infatuation of every girl in the school. But we learn that she is in this position because her elder brother is ill, and so she is taking up his place as heir to the school and dojo in his stead. Deep down, she loves cute things and wants to wear dresses too. But that doesn't mean she hates martial arts. The conflict at first seems two-sided, but instead she realizes she can do both. Her family is supportive, but she was hindering herself due to a misguided sense of responsibility. I really appreciate this kind of messaging, that we don't and shouldn't have to pick and choose who we are, what restrictive box we fit in. Those are just a few examples of why I ended up really coming to love the show's cast, far beyond their initially quirky personalities. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, which you should do at Core Reviews, link in the description, you probably saw, I don't know, maybe one or two tweets about the show. It's a very screen capable show thanks to having a lot of strong expressions, and there's maybe one character I tended to focus on more than others. Maybe just, just by a little bit. I love Erika Kurumi. I love her face, I love her voice, I love her personality, I love her face, did I mention I love her face? Her bubbly character pulls the entire show's momentum in to orbit around her, despite Tsubomi technically being the true center point of the series. Similar to Usagi of Sailor Moon, she's incredibly friendly and compassionate, but blunt to a fault. Not high on the book smarts and mind games, more one to resolve any issues directly. And, as is to be expected since this show is great, we even see a bit behind why she is this way. Because that outgoing personality developed, at least in part, as a way for her to cope with her feelings of inadequacy towards her older sister, who is a professional model. 
Her older sister is beautiful and popular and loved by everyone, and as a result, Erika often acts with excessive directness towards the issues of others. I think this is in part a desire to solve other people's problems where she can't solve her own, and also out of a feeling of needing to earn someone's love and friendship. And while as the series progresses, she does begin to heal her relationship with her sister, and learns to temper her personality and be more understanding of the feelings of others, that directness does stay in some capacity. Erika is kinda emotionally brilliant and retarded at the same time. She is able to recognize how people and how she herself feels extremely quickly, and is immediately motivated to act on said feeling, but her hindrance is she often lacks the nuance and flowery language that is necessary to temper the blows of an emotionally tempestuous state of mind. Still, her genuity often shines through and wins over the others regardless, and it is largely through her actions that the whole cast is able to come together and overcome any issues they have. Erika is among the first to begin addressing her own character flaw, and is integral in helping the others address theirs. The first to embrace her old flawed self, to appreciate and understand the need to love oneself rather than bottle up and discard anything you dislike. She is funny and loving and immediately brings life to any scene she enters, even her poorly chosen words are usually said with only the best intentions. Erika is despite her flaws, honest with herself and with others. She addresses her emotions, which is part of why I think she appeals to me so strongly. The Genki outgoing type, the one who's direct but hides their pain, the Ohana, the Mikage, those characters always tend to resonate strongly with me. They're both relatable and aspirational, realizing elements and issues in myself I can identify with, as well as personality traits I wish I embodied. I rarely voice how I feel emotionally outside of videos like these, even then that's a somewhat rare occasion. I can never bring myself to feel like anyone cares enough that it would matter, and I struggle to communicate with others on topics of emotion. I always want to be there for my friends that struggle emotionally and are brave or wise enough to actually talk to others about it. I want to act with empathy, to say the right thing, and I try and hopefully succeed, but still I wish I had that immediacy, that directness to address and respond and vocalize emotions at the drop of the hat, to turn the mood around the second I enter a room. Erika often encounters issues because she is direct, because she doesn't think to bother with the BS, but I'd still say for the most part she's better off for it, not holding back and being, well, real, whatever that means. Meanwhile, I struggle to think of an occasion where I didn't run through my mind the multitude of possible reactions someone might have to what I say like it's a math equation, often picking the path of least resistance, the path of lowest conflict. Sometimes I do wish I could be straightforward about how I feel without this awkward process of writing and narration and editing that lets me disassociate from what I'm saying enough to actually put it out there. I don't know that I believe that there is any real you, but characters like Erika do show me something I find myself longing for occasionally, realizing a persona that I feel I can never embody. So, uh... I like Hard Catch Precure. Sorry, I got a little weird there. Thank you for watching. I'd like to give a big thank you to my patrons who are on screen right now. I am trying to produce content more frequently, and the more money I make doing this gives me more freedom with which to allocate time towards it, so it's very much appreciated. If you'd like to patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash core reviews. I recently went through and restructured a lot of the reward tiers. As little as $5 gets you access to my monthly podcast. And I also added some other awards for different tiers that I think some people might appreciate. Alongside that, I would like to say I do have a public Discord server now, open to everyone, so come on down to the link in the description, join my server, chat up, I'm pretty active in there. Um, it's it's good time, it's a good time. You should, you should join. And finally, before I leave you all, I just would like to give a quick shout out to my music channel. I've started doing weekly songs, so far I have two out as we speak. Meditate, take a break, don't hesitate, meditate, take a break, don't hesitate, don't overwork or overfeel. It's not just traffic. Wish I had I'm posting one every Wednesday. If you want to check that out, I would 
really, really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.